All right, let's see. I don't think anybody's in here just yet. So once some people start joining, I'll start cooking. Meanwhile, let me grab me a drink. We are gonna go with the truly. Oh, I got one viewer. I can't tell who it is. Say something, say hello, throw hands up. Hello, hello, hello. Um, cheers. I got me a strawberry lemonade, truly. Jocelyn, hi. Let's wave back. Actually, I don't know how to wave back, and my setup's a little janky. So, you know what? We just gonna leave this phone set up on these boxes and these milk crates um, because it seems like it's in a good place. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe out there. Um, sane, I know I'm going a little crazy sitting up in the house. So, come on, 11 viewers. <laughs> Aaron, Sarah, Jocelyn. Okay, so what's for dinner? I am cooking. We're gonna do a quinoa salad. I should probably stop turning around because I got a ball spot right there, but whatever. Uh, but we're going to do a quinoa salad with some fresh greens, um, a little easy vinaigrette. The quinoa salad is going to have like some roasted sweet potatoes. We're going to do um, a blackened salmon filet. And then on top of that filet, we're going to put a um, bacon and cherry tomato compote. Hey, Sarah, how are you? What's up, Narasha? How are you? Um, yeah, once again, cheers to everybody. Everybody stay safe. Stay your ass at home. I'm so tired of people out roaming around acting like ain't nothing going on and if um what are all these faces and thumbs up i've never been live on facebook only on instagram so i wish i could add somebody to be able to like chime in into the conversation or whatever but hey cousin i see you jan <laughs> um okay so really quick just to kind of go over the prep things that i'm gonna do like i said i'm doing a quinoa salad with some fresh greens um and it's gonna have some roasted sweet potatoes couple other veggies in it super simple um, and then I'm gonna do the salmon filet with a bacon and tomato compote on top um, I got some stuff already prepped up over here for the compote we're gonna add um, we're gonna do some tomatoes can you see it there we go we got some tomatoes cherry tomatoes already diced up a couple cloves of garlic and some red onion um, to that I'm also gonna do like some rice wine vinegar some honey obviously some salt and pepper we got to season our food nothing comes out of this kitchen that ain't seasoned so just know that um other than that to the salad we're gonna do like cucumbers fresh red onions and some roasted uh sweet potatoes as far as the roasted sweet potatoes i felt like they were gonna take way too long to cook while i was on live so i went ahead and diced them up and started roasting them about 10 minutes ago on 375 everybody can see that you see the steam it's almost like food tv network um so with the sweet potatoes honestly all i did was a little bit of salt pepper and uh, olive oil and this is a very small sweet potato I wasn't trying to cook a bunch of food because it's just me and my roommate here um, and I didn't want a bunch of leftovers sitting around okay so let's get started first thing we're gonna do is start the quinoa we're gonna get our water boiling back here so with the quinoa I just got some regular um, quinoa from Trader Joe's I'm gonna be like an influence you guys even though you can't see my hand behind it, but you know how they do. They're like, oh, look at the size, which I don't know. But, um, so this is just some regular quinoa that I got from Trader Joe's. With quinoa, whenever I cook it, I typically like to do it um, in chicken broth or like a beef broth or veggie broth or something like that. Honestly, it just, um, it just um, gives the quinoa a little bit more flavor. And if you do like rice or anything like that. So never just really boil anything in water. Honestly, when I make like spaghetti or anything like that, I also um, do like chicken broth or something to season my water. It just gives the noodles or whatever you're boiling a little bit more flavor. So with that being said, I didn't have chicken broth. So what I did here was took just a bouillon cube um, and threw it in my water. So when I'm boiling it, it's gonna give my uh, quinoa a good flavor. Now with the quinoa, to make it like a decent portion um, I'm only gonna do a cup a cup of dry quinoa is probably gonna come out to close to about three cups cooked come on 24 viewers Michael my mom is listening hi mom love you miss you um, okay so while we're getting the water ready to boil I'm gonna go ahead let me see oh yeah you can see me over there in the corner I'm gonna pull my bacon out of the fridge it's kind of like food TV network hi 
<laughs> I'm gonna pull my bacon out of the fridge and we're gonna get that, um, we're gonna get that rendering off. Let's see if we can turn it a little bit. Boom. Yeah, that's better. So, um, on this plate right here, I got four strips of bacon. Um, and essentially what rendering off, I don't want to use a bunch of terms that people don't know and that kind of thing, but essentially rendering off is what you're going to do. You're going to take your product, pork, whatever it is, um, and cook it on like a low heat to uh, render off the fat in it. Um, because what I want to do is utilize the fat from the bacon to cook, you know, my onions, my tomatoes, and my garlic in. It's just going to add another level of flavor to the uh, dish. Um, you guys send some questions, some cooking questions. Um, so that way I can answer some stuff while I'm... Hi, Allie. Okay, everything is better with bacon, cousin. You hear me? Um, so yeah, we're going to render off the bacon on like medium low heat. Um, I unfortunately have a gas range, which is annoying. Um, I wish every house in America came with a... I mean, I have electric range, I'm sorry. But I wish every house in America came with a gas range. It's just easier to kind of like regulate your heat uh, when you have a gas range because you can actually see it. But since I don't, we're going to turn on, like I said, about medium low heat. Um, and we're going to let the bacon start rendering off and get some fat from that. So how's everybody doing? Hey, cousin. Hey, Miss Marty, how you doing? How's everybody doing in the quarantine? What are we like missing? What are we wishing we can get out and do? Yesterday I had um, a really good talk with some friends. <laughs> Allie, I can't hear you baby girl, but that's funny. <laughs> um, yesterday I had some a really good talk with some friends. We were just hanging out, having a cocktail last night. Um, and we were saying, you know, pick three things that you know, A, we want to take advantage of, or we're more grateful for, or we'll actually just look forward to doing uh, once this quarantine, this whole situation is up. Regine, how you doing? I know, I miss you too, darling. We got to get a margarita. Until then, I'm doing um, a truly. Also, too, I don't know about everybody else, but I've actually been really active and working out uh, while I've been locked up in the house. This is day eight for me. Some people, it's been less 24 hours because you can't sit your ass down somewhere. But please do that. Um, but I actually feel like I've been losing weight. I've been super productive, getting out, taking my dog on a walk, doing some in-home like workout classes, that kind of stuff. Um, okay, all right. So we got our water to boil. Again, like I said, I got one cup of uh, red quinoa. This is gonna cook up to about three cups. Um, with the measurements as far as the water and everything, um, one cup of quinoa, you typically want to do about two, two and a half cups of water. And like I said, again, I am using um, some chicken bouillon in my water. But if you had, um, say for instance, you had some chicken broth or some beef broth or something in the cabinet, definitely use that because that's just going to give your quinoa a little bit more flavor. Um, and when I say we want to render out the fat and the bacon and cook it on like medium low heat, again, this is what I was talking about with electric stoves. You can never really tell how hot it's going to be. I mean, essentially, my heat is non-existent right there. So we're going to turn it up just a little bit. Um, for those that are joining in or just joining in, um, I just want to say hello. Hey, cousin, Blair, <laughs> Marcus, of course. What up, darkness? <laughs> um, for those who are just tuning in, uh, I just wanted to get online and like cook something healthy. A lot of people, like I said, can't boil water. Um, and right now they're trying to, you know, scramble and figure out what to cook. This is something healthy. It's something easy. Honestly, you can take this little um, recipe and use it in weeks and months on down the line when you got a dinner party or like a quick lunch, even for um, meal prep. So I still am getting the same question. What are you cooking? Blair, don't make me. <laughs> there is other people in this chat that ain't family. <laughs> Um, so I'm making a quinoa salad with some fresh filled greens. Um, I did a ahead. I did go ahead a uh, time and make like a little vinaigrette. So in this jar, it's uh, olive oil, fresh lemon juice. I got a little bit of um, crushed red pepper, fresh chopped garlic. Um, and I like making vinaigrettes and like mason jars. Honestly, you do it once a week. It'll last for a week or two. It just depends on how much you like to you know use for dressings. But also too, when it separates or whatever, you can just really shake it up and it'll kind of emulsify itself uh, back together. But a really simple dressing. So I'm gonna make, like I said, quinoa salad with the salmon on top 
in a tomato compote, tomato and bacon compote, because we need like a little fun in the dish. Honestly, I'm really annoyed with this bacon though, because it is not cooking fast enough. So with the quinoa, it'll probably take about 10 to 12 minutes to boil. Once you get to a point where most of the water is cooked out of it, um, what you're gonna wanna do is uh, just take a cover and cover it and let it sit with the heat off for about, you know, five, 10 minutes, however long you want to. Um, just to like let it um, steam a little bit and then you're going to take a fork and kind of break it up so that way it doesn't clump together. Um, again, I did go ahead and take some sweet potatoes before I started the, um, before I started the cooking demo. And I chopped them up with a little bit of dices, the dices, a little bit of dice and uh, tossed it in some olive oil, salt and pepper. They've been roasting for maybe 10, 12 minutes. You can poke them with the fork, just as long as they're fork tender. Um, they don't have to be super, super soft. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take those out because I am gonna toss them in my salad. So I don't want it to wilt my field greens once I get ready to like build the salad or whatever. Um, <laughs> Marcus, <laughs> y'all. DJ, hello, how are you? Yes, yeah, Sade, sure, I'm putting sweet potatoes. Um, and sweet potatoes, I feel like, are kind of one of those things that people have sitting around the house all the time. They never use. They, like, start getting a little wrinkly. And you're like, what am I going to do with these? And typically, people honestly always do candy yams in the South. But sweet potatoes can be a savory, you know, part of a dish, too. <laughs> Come on, Barefoot Contessa. I wish I had her coins right now. Maybe her vacation house to quarantine in. <laughs> um, anybody got any, like, culinary questions or, like, some ingredients at their house that they don't know what to do with. Are they like tired of making spaghetti or rice and tacos and they wanna like figure something, figure something else out to cook. Pork tenders how to describe my build, <laughs> DJ. <laughs> I love you, I miss you Fred. I hope you're doing okay out there in California. I will say this, I have been showering through this whole quarantine, but today is the first day I actually got up and put on clothes. It's typically been like, Workout pants and a tank top. That's about all we're doing. Uncle Vernon, how you doing? <laughs> Yo, Marcus, right? That pork tender joke was pretty good. Honestly, Jocelyn, when I'm cooking like a good meal for friends or something like that, I try not to get too tipsy till after the dinner. I mean, obviously, having a good glass of wine or something like that while you're cooking, I support that. Um, but I try not to get, you know, too tipsy only because it's. Sometimes you lose your focus on like the multitasking aspect of it. And I know myself, I'm not a person who, you know, is making dinner, I boil the pasta, and then I make the rice, and then I do like one step at a time. That's that's not how I work. Um, so I'm always and forever got 10 million things going on in the kitchen. Like people on TV say, ooh, I wish you could smell the bacon right now. It smells so delicious. <laughs> All right. So the quinoa is going good, the bacon's rendering down, and you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, you got a good amount of fat in the pan right there. Um, and rendering again is just cooking your bacon or whatever protein product on like a medium, low heat, um, just so it renders out the fat and you're gonna utilize that fat to be able to, you know, saute or cook whatever other veggies or anything else. What's up, Shelly? Hey, how are you doing, Texacana? I saw y'all were on lockdown and you have a curfew. Okay, so while we got this going on, I kind of got everything set up already. I'm going to go ahead and sear off the salmon fillets and get them set to the side. So because with the compote, I am going to add like a sweet aspect to it. I'm going to do a little bit of brown sugar, some honey, and some rice wine vinegar. Uh, for the seasoning with the salmon, I'm actually going to do a blackened salmon. Um, you can buy blackened. Quinoa is gluten-free. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Um, and I don't know why I'm laughing at that. It's just funny to me. Hey, Jennifer, how are you and dad doing? I know it's probably him creeping on me on your Facebook because <laughs> he's anti-Facebook. Yes, quinoa is gluten-free, but obviously there are like seasonings, things out there that aren't gluten-free. So if you want to make sure it's gluten-free when you're cooking it, just kind of check labels, that kind of thing. Um, all right, so like I was saying with the salmon, I'm actually going to add a sweet compote on top of it with the um, tomatoes and the um <laughs> with the tomatoes and the bacon and honey and all that because i don't do lorries you know everything in this kitchen 
comes from scratch, even my blackening seasoning. So beforehand, I went ahead and did my own little blackening seasoning. In here, I have salt, I got a little bit of pepper, I got some cayenne, I got some paprika, I have onion powder, garlic powder, some dried thyme, some crushed red pepper. Typically, I don't add crushed red pepper to my blackening seasoning. Typically, I'll go with cayenne. Um, I said cayenne, I don't have cayenne in it. Typically, I'll go with uh, cayenne in my uh, blackening seasoning, but since I don't have any, and I'm abiding by the law not leaving the house, I just put some crushed red pepper in there. But yes, cousin, you can do Lowry's blackening seasoning or whatever uh, you want to if you don't feel like, you know, making it your own blackening seasoning. Um, all right, so with my salmon fillets, look at me, I'm kind of like Food TV Network. Everything is on a white plate, all set up nice. Look at that. Come on, salmon. Um, so with my salmon fillets, I just kind of um, rinse them off already. I don't know about you guys, but I always rinse all my proteins off um, just to ensure they're clean or whatever. Oh, we need a little bit of this going on over here. Um, but yes, I always rinse my proteins off with the salmon. I am going to sear it in a cast iron like grill skillet. Um, just as I want the grill mark for presentation, honestly, you don't have to do that. It's left up to you, but you know, I want it to look good. Michael, is that considered bacon fat? We just gonna call it bacon fat. How about that? <laughs> Honestly, I need to get me something to put this in. Again, I got me no little container on the, on the side. So um, I'm gonna take the bacon out uh, because now what I'm gonna do is throw in the onions and the garlic and everything and start letting that kind of simmer. Uh, let's put out this heat. We're gonna turn this front off. Okay, so I don't know if everybody needs a little demo chopping onions or anything, but we're going to do that real quick so you can see what's the proper way to chop an onion. So onions, you know, obviously they are round. When you cut an onion, you want to cut it. Let's do this. You want to cut the ends off, leaving a little bit of the um, other side there. I mean, I guess it's like the core of the onion uh, because this is what's going to hold it in place when you actually do the dice. Now when you do the dice, you're going to lay the flat side down on your cutting board and with like a medium sized onion, I'll typically go like three slices in, which are going to be um, pretty much what I'm going to get out of this. And then I'll go straight across the onion. So again, let me come up a little bit close to the camera. Next time I do this, I'm going to have like a, a better setup. Um, so yes, we're going to do three slices in this way and then we're going to chop straight across. Um, I, I put raw salmon on the citrus but it's on a plate. <laughs> hey, don't judge me. <laughs> Does it make you feel better? I honestly bleached everything in my house today for the whole Corona donut scare. Um, looks like I'm going to need a little bit more water for my quinoa so we're going to add a little bit more. Someone asked me, was I going to um, put a recipe up? I tell you, hey, how are you doing? Um, lentils, lentils are really good. You can put them in soup. You can utilize them. Um, what else can you do lentils with? I mean, you can make like tacos with lentils. Like I said, lentils take a little bit longer to cook. So when you do want to cook with lentils, just make sure you're setting aside some time. You can throw them in a crock pot with like, you know, a good old ham hock. <laughs> and let them kind of simmer away that way. Um, but lentils are really, really good and filling. Yes, I bleach my counters, I bleach cabinets, doorknobs, everything. Y'all should be doing the same. Ashley, what's up? How are you? Come on, Netflix series, that'd be nice. All right, let me get back to what I was doing. Um, so we're gonna dice up this onion really quick. Uh, when you're doing any dicing or anything of veggies, just make sure that you tuck your knuckles back and use that as a guide for chopping ingredients. Um, only because um, that's the safe way to do it. I see a lot of people will, I see a lot of people have, you know, their fingers all spread out and in the way. And that's definitely going to cause some trouble when it comes to uh, slicing veggies and stuff. Only because right now we don't need no extra people going to the hospital. Okay. All right, so my pan is actually really good and hot over here smoking. So make it a little smoky in here with the um, the cast iron skillet. That's the one drawback to cooking indoors with a cast iron. It smokes up the place. But you know it is what it is. 
Now with blackening seasoning or blackening anything, I like to get a good crust on it. So when I do sear it off, you got a really good like seasoning on your salmon or chicken or whatever you're doing. Again, like I said, you can make your own blackening season. I did make mine. It's got a little bit of a crushed red pepper, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. Um, we're gonna stop putting here. Dry thyme. Yeah, the basics. All right. Um, little rule of thumb too. If you were ever making a fish of any sort and it had skin on, you always want to do skin side down. Um, something with like salmon. If you, uh, Lucoya, how are you? Desiree, what up? <laughs> if you are ever cooking with like a fish that has skin on it. Um, what you want to do is take your knife, score the fish before you cook it skin side down because if you don't, it'll curl up. Uh, but you always want to cook it skin side down and then flip it, finish it in the oven, finish it in the, you know the frying pan, whatever you want to do. But always skin side down first. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands. You guys entertain yourself, say something witty to each other, make friends. This is the time now to be making friends. It's so good to see all my people. In here, I thought honestly that I was gonna do this live video and have like three people watch. So we got up to 40, which is cute. I'm here for it. Hey cousin, I got all the cousins in here. Uh, okay, so I went ahead and put my salmon on the on the cast iron. I did turn the heat off. I got it really hot and then I turned the heat off just to try to alleviate some of the smoke. I don't want to smoke you guys out in here. Keisha Gabbage! How you doing, child? <laughs> I did turn the, like I said, I turned the heat off to try to alleviate some of the smoke. I didn't want to smoke out my little video, but it's inevitable. It's gonna happen. You know what, honestly, I keep picking this up and not taking a sip, we're gonna do that. Ashley, how are you doing, darling? <laughs> Netflix benches. What are you watching on Netflix right now? If anybody in this group says Tiger Kings, I'm gonna lose it. I've seen everybody talk about Tiger Kings, and I honestly am over it. Like I said, I just want to get some good grill marks on my fish. That's why I'm using the cast iron skillet. You don't have to use the cast iron skillet. Um, but you know, I figured at the end I might take a picture of my food or Susan, yes, I can cook for you. Whenever I come to TK, you have to link up. Other than that, you gotta catch me at Austin. Okay, so the quinoa is looking good. I added a little bit more water to it. Like I said, it looked like, you know, it was not gonna get where I needed it to be before I covered it and let it sit. I got my purple onions uh, rendering off in the bacon fat or simmering off in the bacon fat. We're gonna go ahead and add our tomatoes to it. Get them to cooking. The only other thing that I need to chop up for this is some fresh garlic. For all you people out there that cook, please don't buy the garlic in the tub already pre-chopped. It's terrible. It's awful. It's just, you're just not gonna get the same result. You're not gonna get the same flavor. Take the time to go ahead and chop up your garlic. So what I'm gonna do, even though my oven has been off a little bit, I'm gonna throw the cast iron skillet in there and let it finish. Um, I typically like my salmon medium rare. Some people like it well done. Um, that's left up to you, but we're gonna go medium rare on this. Steph, Brandon, Amy Co. Whoops, you're a little late to the party, girl. You're like 21 minutes late. All American is a good binge watch show. Okay. Pre-chopped garlic only. Come on, Brandon, don't do that to me. Okay, so I'm gonna get my couple cloves of garlic and we're gonna chop that up. Again, for the people that just got to the party, we are doing a um, a blackened salmon fillet. And with that blackened salmon fillet, I'm gonna put it on a uh, quinoa and field green salad with like a little homemade vinaigrette that I did. Did, did. and the vinaigrette is just got, it's really, really simple. It's just lemon juice, um, some olive oil, crushed red pepper, fresh chopped garlic, salt, pepper, um, and that's about it. If you want to make it a little more complex, you can add, you know, Parmesan cheese, whatever. Uh, but I made this like three days ago um, because I made a salad. And I just, you know, left it sitting out on the counter because it's just lemon juice and olive oil. David, I didn't make beans. I knew you were going to say that. Honestly, I need to contact my cousin Jackie. She is the one responsible for those beans and that recipe. And honestly, I haven't made it in a while. So 
I don't really remember everything that goes in them. It's only because I don't cook by recipe. I cook by eye and kind of taste. I got that from my grandmothers. They both, hell, one of them can make a pound cake in her sleep, and the other one will make a pot of greens and <laughs> have the whole neighborhood coming to the house. Okay, so I know y'all can't see my angle's a little terrible. So in this pot, we got the tomatoes, we got the red onions that I chopped up, and we got the bacon fat that I rendered off from the uh, from the bacon there. Um, if you are ever reading a recipe off the internet or you know Pinterest or whatever, and it says one clove of garlic, don't trust it. It's a terrible recipe. It's a terrible person that came up with it. Um, and they shouldn't be allowed in the kitchen. Okay, well I guess my stove is too hot and the uh, fan is gonna turn off. So I apologize if you guys can't hear me, I'll just speak up. Um, and once this video is over, I think with Facebook, it'll save it. You guys feel free to share it with your friends in the weeks coming. I'm gonna be doing some different recipes. Um, trying to do something, you know, mostly doing some healthy stuff, but I understand people want comfort food in times like this. I think that my meatloaf may be a good recipe to share because you can do it, you know, with whatever kind of protein you choose, ground chicken, ground beef. Um, I typically do ground turkey or ground chicken. I don't eat a whole lot of beef. All right, so to the uh, tomato and onion mixture, I set this up already. Kind of like, you know how it is, you know, food TV, they're like, oh, my sugar just so happens to be here. So um, to this mixture right here, I'm gonna take um, my rice wine vinegar. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar just to give it a little bite. Um, I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna measure this honey. I'm gonna do about a tablespoon of honey. That seems right. Again, you know how the influencers do? This is my honey. See it? It's just honey. JT, what's up cousin? Seriously, all my cousins in here. I feel loud. And then I'm going to also add a, um, another tablespoon. We're going to do a teaspoon of brown sugar. Because we did add the honey. We don't want too much sweetness from the uh, brown sugar, but we're going to do a teaspoon of brown sugar. And with this, like I said, I wanted it to be a little sweet. Just because the uh, salmon should have some heat from it. Because I did like a black meat spice with it. All right, my quinoa looks good. I ain't gonna lie, the quinoa almost burnt. <laughs> Looks in here talking about face So what I'm gonna do now is just cover this quinoa. If I can find the lid. Look at there. So we're gonna set that to the side and we're just gonna let it sit for a minute. Um, clickbait, one clove. Yes, exactly. At least three cloves of garlic. I do have hella cousin Chardé. One of them li lives in your neck of the woods. She's from Cali. Um, keep doing these videos and I'll keep watching. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate it. Honestly, I'm bored as hell. Uh, once I get back to work, I don't know how much time I'm going to have, but I think it would be something fun to do. You know, like once a week. I definitely, moving forward, want to get a better setup because right now we're a little janky. Oh, that's good. That's real good. I will say to this, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Just a pinch. And then I'm going to do a little, little bit of pepper as well in here. Anybody got any culinary questions for me? You love burnt quinoa, Ashley. <laughs> Nobody loves burnt quinoa. Don't lie to me. <laughs> that was funny, though. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. All right, so that looks done, that looks done. How many minutes? Honestly, we're at 26 minutes. I wanted to keep it right around 30 minutes, keep people engaged. Joseph, JP, what up? She's fired, actually, I can't believe you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna clear off my space over here. Keep everything neat and clean. I'm not gonna put the fish back on the fruit, Jocelyn. <laughs> To be coming for me. <laughs> um, see, again, like Rachel, Wayne, I have my clean greens here for you. Let's see who texts me. I put on my watch just because I knew somebody would text me. 
how he sent me my cousin Omar sent me a tip. Let me talk to him and tell him to jump on my live. Cousin, I'm doing a live cooking show right now. Cooking show? Cooking demo? I don't know. On Facebook. You should look. Okay, so let's make the salad. So I got my fresh greens here. Um, and you can do anything. Honestly, I wanted to do quinoa and arugula, but there was no arugula in the um, fresh cracked pepper. What? I didn't get that question. Clutch the pearls. <laughs> Cousin, you are here. I see you. How can you make quinoa in a bag taste good? Honestly, cousin, like I was saying, quinoa is one of those things that you need to boil it with some sort of like liquid that has flavor to it already. Whether it's chicken broth, beef broth, veggie broth, something like that. Never boil it in water because it's going to taste terrible. Um, <laughs> somebody said you should take it out the bag before eating it. DJ, you do the comedy, I do the cooking because you're fucking killing it right now. <laughs> okay, so let me get back to what I was doing. I need my cutting board. And I did clean out my sink over here, you guys. Got everything set up so that way, when it's time to rock and roll, I will have it together. Um, for the salad, I am going to do some, on top of the, I mean, with the quinoa and the mixed greens, I'm going to do some sweet potatoes. I'm gonna do some cucumbers, and I'm gonna do some fresh uh, diced onions as well. With cucumbers, you always wanna cut off the end. The reason why you wanna cut off the end because um, they typically end, the ends of the cucumbers are a little bit bitter. So when you cut them off, um, it's gonna alleviate that from when you're chopping it. Also too, for like a visual thing with cucumbers, I always, um, I'll take my peeler and do something fun and just kind of, um, See what I'm doing? I'll take this and go around the cucumber and leave some of the green, but also expose some of the white of it. So that way when you dice it up, it just looks kind of fun. Doesn't make it taste any better, but it looks fun. So we're gonna do this. Um, if you are a person who doesn't like the seed aspect of cucumbers, um, there are some seedless cucumbers out there, but I personally don't care. And these are cheaper. All right, so got my cucumber peel. And we're just going to do some uh, very thin slices of cucumber. Cucumbers and tomatoes, when I add them to salads or anything, they're something that I typically like to add just a little bit of salt and pepper to season them. Um, but with this, I'm not going to do that because I got, you know, a bunch of flavor going on already elsewhere. So we are. Got those sliced up. Again, onion. How to cut an onion. Cut it in half. Um, leave a little bit of the end of the core in there for you. So that's what's going to hold it together. Three slices this way, across the top, and that's gonna give you a perfect dice. When you're cutting onions or anything too, like I said, this is how you wanna hold your fingers. That way, um, oh, the fish. <laughs> the oven is already off, so the fish is good. We don't have to worry about it getting overcooked. Cousin, it is not oriental food. What up, Eric? Um, I will do noodles for you the next time. Actually, you tell me what you want me wanna learn how to make, and I'll do that next time. I was just trying to work with some stuff that I already had in the fridge. All right, so let's dice this onion up. Um, I do want to say thank you everybody out there for like joining in, tuning in. I mean, most of y'all ain't got shit else to do like me, so this is pretty fun. But in the meantime, on a serious note, I see a lot of people not taking this whole quarantine and coronavirus, not taking it serious. It is a serious thing. Um, there's a lot of fake news out there, so before you start posting things on the internet, and heightening tensions and fears between people. Like, just make sure you got your information correct. AJ, what up? Long time no here. Anthony Carrillo, what up, classmate? Did somebody ask what I was cooking? Yes, I said it like six times. Um, next time I'll be more diligent about actually posting and uh, putting it out there so people can join at the right time. Okay, so we need to have more counter space. So let's start getting rid of some of this. The salmon, I mean the uh, tomatoes and everything are finished. Um, so I'm just going to add the bacon back to it. I'm not going to waste that bacon. Um, it's definitely going to go right on top of that salmon for sure. Um, Alright, so these are my sweet potatoes. 
potatoes behind them up. These are my sweet potatoes that I roasted earlier. Like I said, just a little bit of salt, pepper, um, and olive oil to get those roasted. And then I'm gonna add those to my mixed greens. Quinoa's probably been sitting maybe five minutes since it was done. I'm just going to kind of stir it up a little bit with a fork um, to make sure it's not clumped up or whatever. Honestly, and with quinoa, you can use that as a base of a salad. You can use it as an ingredient as a salad. Quinoa is really good for protein. So if you're looking uh, to find new ways to get protein without, you know, necessarily, um, yes, use the bacon, don't waste it. But if you're looking for a good way to add protein to your dishes without actually having like some source of meat, uh, pro, uh, quinoa is really good for that. So to this salad, we're just going to add like three tablespoons of the quinoa and then leave the rest. And then this is my dressing, like I said, that I made um, earlier. Where did my mom go? Brian, what up? Jennifer. Yay. People are saying they watch me all day long. Honestly, I watch myself too. Especially if that means I'm getting a check. Okay. So let's add this dressing to the salad. And then we don't want to forget our other ingredients that we chopped up over here. Um, we got some fresh cucumbers. I didn't do a good job of slicing them all the way through. A little bit of purple onion. We don't want to overdo it with the purple onion. I personally am an onion fan. But we got onions in the comp and the uh, compote over here, so we don't want to overdo it. Let's take our salmon out for a little bit. Come on, savage. What y'all know about that? Look at them grill marks. Hi. Oh, somebody said we can't see. Yeah, I know it's annoying. My setup is like a little janky. This is something I decided to do yesterday. I was like, what the hell? I'm going to do it. So like I said, in the bowl, you got your quinoa. You got your greens, salad mix, field greens. You can use arugula, whatever you want to. We got purple onions, cucumbers, and roasted sweet potatoes. The vinaigrette, again, is just something I whipped up here at home. Olive oil, lemon juice, crushed red pepper, salt, pepper, and fresh chopped garlic. Um, okay. We're going to give this a little toss. I know somebody's going to have a toss salad joke to say because that's just how it works, people. Um, yeah. Love that joke. It never gets old. Let me grab my plate, and then I'm going to plate it up. So you guys can really get a good look at it. Um, and honestly, all these ingredients in here are really, really cheap. Besides the salmon. You know, salmon can be a little pricey, but it's not that expensive when it comes to seafood. But this is a really cheap and inexpensive meal. And it's healthy uh, as well. Alright, so we got a salad on there. Presentation, you always want to wipe your plate off. Let me get a napkin. Make it look good. Food is like a visual thing too. Everybody loves like for their food to look good. Venteria, I'm totally down for that. Either you have to come to Austin or I have to come to Dallas and we can do a little cooking demo together. All right, let's take our salmon filet. And we're gonna put, you know what, this one looks really good. It's got the best grill marks. Jesus, that's hot. I'm going to put that one right on top. Oh, bacon and tomatoes. And there you go. Boom. We did it, you guys. 36 minutes later, we did it. How does that look? Would y'all eat it? Ain't T, how are you? <laughs> yes, let's eat. Yes, presentation is key. Uh, so again, this is a little bit of quinoa salad, mixed field greens, some cucumbers, tomatoes, house-made vinaigrette with some roasted sweet potatoes. And then I did a blackened salmon with a tomato and bacon uh, kind of compote on top. All right. Well, that's it, you guys. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Michael, what's up? Everybody's late to the show. Michael, I think you, maybe you're just joining. I don't know. But I'm assuming Facebook is like Instagram. Once the video, uh, once I'm done with the video, it'll save it. Um, I'm hoping it does. Um, if not, that sucks. But everybody stay safe out there. I just wanted to do something fun, something easy. This is super quick. Honestly, I did this in about 30 minutes. I'm not gonna lie, some of the prep was done ahead, but it was no more than about 10, 12 minutes of just chopping up some veggies and washing some stuff um, to put it together. But there we go. So we got blackened salmon, tomato bacon compote, 
with uh, quinoa and mixed green salad with sweet potatoes, cucumbers, purple onions, and a house vinaigrette. Cheers, everybody. Y'all stay safe. I'm logging off. Bye. Love you. Love you, cousin. Katina Lee, I'm logging off. Sorry, I already cooked. Call me. <laughs> oh, actually, let me take it out the setup.